we always had a joke that, she, and she said to me, she said, you know, if there's any way when I die that I can come back and scare the shit out of you, she said, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And so she used to say, oh, I'm going to haunt you, Jilly. I'm going to haunt you. So even now to this day, if something kind of funny happens that I think, oh, that was so man, or uh, something that was definitely her humor that happens that you think, whoa, where'd that come from? I always have a little laugh and say, okay, thanks, man, you know. <laughs> We actually call her grandmother Yingying, which is the Chinese word for grandmother on the father's side of the family. Uh, I called him, I call him Grandpa Foy. We in our native language in Hindi, we call them Dada and Dadi. My other grandmother would be Maman Bazur, which is Persian for grandmother. Which is true, means old woman in King Rwanda. I called her Safta, which is a Hebrew word for grandma. Everybody called her Mami Tita. We called her Mima. Mima and Dede. Grandma. Hi, I'm Steph. And I'm Robin. Welcome to Stories from Grandparents, the podcast where we share stories about and from grandparents. Do you remember your grandfather? Yeah. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. He died when I was, uh, I think I was about eight years old. So I don't remember him well. Yeah. But I remember him having, he had uh, stomach cancer and I remember seeing him basically after he had had surgery for stomach cancer, he had these l- big staples, you know, uh, that, that had sort of closed the incision from surgery. And I sort of, I mean, I'm sure as a kid, I'm sure that memory of those is exaggerated now, you know, when I think about it, it's all, they're almost like comically large in my memory, mm-hmm. you know, um, just because as a kid, that must've been so shocking to see, you know, this, these things coming out of his yeah. and a wound like that. torso and a wound like that. Yeah. And I do remember after he died, I remember the one thing that comes close to like a, like a supernatural experience, you know, in my, in my life is, uh, thinking that he was at the doorway of the bedroom I was sleeping in after he died. But you know, now I, I don't see it as like a supernatural thing. I just don't, I just see it as probably a dream or something like that. But your mm-hmm. cause I was an eight or nine years old. But it was, at, it was shortly after he passed that yes. you recall having that. Well, it obviously stuck with you enough, mm-hmm. yeah. more than a dream would. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can, dreams are funny in the way that they, I mean, sometimes you experience something that you can't really explain. Like I don't remember seeing him in the doorway, but I feel like you have that knowledge, like that weird extrasensory knowledge that that's the person, right? Like, so that's what I remember of it. The feeling. Yeah. The feeling that it was that even though I couldn't see him, that it was him. Yeah. So, uh. But I'd say it's probably, you know, I mean, it's uh, lots of funny things can happen when you're, you know, asleep or in between sleep and awake. Yeah. You know, it's funny, the story I had told, like kind of one of the, my personal stories I attempted to tell last week was about a kind of recurring dream I had or that I thought I had, like this memory of a little red door in the woods. I lived with my grandparents when I was little and I had this vision of this, like me and my brother playing around this little red door that was like a saloon style door in my memory. And I remember even asking my parents about it when I was a teenager, like different times, like, thinking, like is that was that real? It must be a dream because it was just so vivid, like in the middle of the forest, this red door, like the imagery of it. Mm-hmm. And I had moved away from home uh, you know, when I was 17 and I went to university, I didn't see my grandparents for like 10 years until I moved to Ottawa. And then I went back for the first time after 10 years in 2012. But I, I hadn't lived with my grandparents, obviously, since I was like four or five. And um, I asked my grandmother about the door and I was like, I have this like memory, but I don't know if it's a dream of me and Jason playing around this little red door in your backyard in the woods. And we had gone for a walk back there one day and I just got this feeling. And I started, I walked like sideways into the woods from where we were standing. And I saw these weird like hinges on a tree and I uncovered all this brush and I found it. Mm, Wow. I found it. And it was like this moment of, that question, like, was it a dream? Was it real? Like my Mm -hmm. whole life. And it was real. Like it was this, like, I don't know. It just felt like I'm in the exact 
time and place I'm supposed to be right now for some mm-hmm. reason. And it was like cool. And I took an Instagram picture of it. And what was it? Like, what was the, it was, I think it was actually a cupboard door. My mm. grandmother said it looks like it's off of a cabinet. Yeah. Like a red cabinet. Hmm. And in my memory, I had like this rounded, cool top and we'd pretend it was like a saloon. We'd go in, you know, <laughs> like that's what it was. But, um, yeah, so it was all broken up and I put it together and I took an Instagram picture of it and that was it. And then, um, you know, a couple of days later, my, my grandparents passed me this like wrapped up package, like wrapped in bubble paper and stuff. And my grandfather went up and he, um, glued, glued it, glued it all together and gave it to me. And I don't know, all to say, it just reminded me that sometimes even when, I don't know, you think things are a feeling or a dream, like that was the feeling I had. I was like, it must've just been a dream or yeah. something, but you never know, you know, when you're a kid life's so magical like that I don't know yeah I think the boundary between what's real and what's not real is pretty thin when you're a kid you know it's pretty porous I spent a lot so even after like we moved to Guelph to be with my dad uh, in university when we moved back a couple years later I spent every weekend there like it was like my my thing my grandma would either pick me up from school or I would you know, my mom would drop me off or something, but I spent a lot of time there and I slept in their bedroom, like on the floor. And that's I, interesting. Yeah. Like my grandma, oh my. like maybe you got scared. I think they just had really comfortable carpet. Like they had like, they had really intense carpet in their bedroom. Being shag. Yeah. <laughs> it was very plushy. And my grandma would like lay out like this high density foam. And for some reason, I don't know what it is about grandmother's flannel sheets, but my flannel sheets never feel like my grandma's flannel sheets. I, I don't I don't understand what they do to their flannel. Um, no dryer. Maybe. But it was just like the most like it's got to be like being in the womb. Like it's just it's <laughs> so wonderful to be in my grandma's flannel sheets. Um, and I my grandpa would snore, but they had a fairly large bedroom. So he would be on one side of the room and me and my grandma would be on the other and he would be passed out. And my grandma would stay up late reading me stories. And I remember one night it was. um it was the night that that my great so Adelaide had had died my my grandpa's mom and I was sleeping over and uh, he it was pitch black in the bedroom and I remember he he started snorting around and he says Miriam which is my grandmother's name Miriam what are you doing over here and my grandma kind of sits up she goes Max Max you're talking in your sleep and he's like why are you sitting on my bed. And I'm young and I'm like, holy shit, Yeah, there is a ghost in this room. And my grandma turns the light on and she goes over there and he's like, someone was just sitting on my bed. And, uh, and it, I, he was like, look, I can, I can even feel where it was. And, and anyways, he, w- he didn't go back to sleep that night. He was convinced that his mother had come to, to oh, say goodbye to him. That is so, yeah. Yeah. So that I, is so scary. Those I didn't like fall really back asleep, yeah. but, uh, but that's one of the stories I remember from sleeping. In that, in that bedroom of terror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went from this best carpet to bedroom of terror. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So speaking of ghosties, I've had some wine now, so now I'm ready. Full of stories. So in my grandparents' house, uh, there was like this jam cupboard in the basement. And my grandmother thought it would be a good idea to tell me that's where Albert lived. Ooh. So she would, you know, we'd be ba- we did a lot of baking. And she would send me down to get, you know, more sugar or something. And she'd say, say hi to Albert. And, and then my family wonders why I have like issues. Complexes. Complexes. So I would go downstairs and I would run to the jam cupboard and I'd be like, Albert, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. And I would sing. So I would like drown out any kind of, you know, creepy silences. And then the way that their stairs were kind of built to go back upstairs, it created this tunnel echo effect so it sounded like there was footsteps behind you when you were running up and I could hear my grandma laughing and she's like Albert's behind you <laughs> you're the worst this is that's, like, that's like really mean actually <laughs> like, and that yeah. they named it so yeah. she's like there's a ghost yeah. like has a name yeah. like, who is that yeah We were, all the grandchildren would get together during vacation, our school vacation. So all of us came from different parts of the country and we got together at my grandparents' place during our vacation. As far as personality is concerned, my my dada, my grandfather, 
was a very quiet person. He would essentially, after retirement, that is when we found, knew him, when we grew up, he would just sit on his chair, designated chair, read some books, read the newspaper and remain totally quiet. Yeah, he would just watch, in the sense, just watch us play. He would not play with us. So we would play around and um, our parents and uncles and aunties would take care of us, take care of all our needs. And my grandfather would just sit and watch. And then uh, for the day, and then he would go and take his rest at his designated time. And at the end of the day, that is when my grandfather would get us all children together and tell us stories. All kinds of stories. But most interestingly, ghost stories. Oh, Yeah, he would give us the impression that the city is populated by a number of ghosts. Very, it's a haunted area. That is the impression he would give us. Every single day he would tell us some story about he was walking somewhere and then he saw somebody hugging a tree and he knew that it was not a real person. So he went further ahead, turned back, and that person who was hugging the tree was, vanished, was gone, just vanished. So was he telling you these stories like to scare you or was it just like a part of like having fun with you? Probably just engaging us. Yeah. Because we would listen in awe and believe every single word that he would say. Yeah. We would really soak it in, all of us. And with pin drop silence, our parents and uncles and aunties would sit in a corner and just smile at themselves and we would sit around my grandfather and he would tell us stories. He would tell us this story all the time. He repeated those stories that there's a lady who would come to him and ask for a silver coin every day. So he would give a silver coin to her and she would go to the door, to the gate of the house and vanish. So he was suggesting that this was a ghost. So one fine day I asked him, I was probably five or six years old. I said, Grandpa, if you gave a silver coin to a lady who was a ghost, how did the coin hold on to her hand. Wouldn't it fall down <laughs> if, if she was not a real person? It should be fallen on the ground. How would she take it? He, he just said, well, she took it and then she went away. That's it. Go go to go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> go to bed now. I told you a bunch of ghost stories. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember any of the other stories he would tell you? Yeah, all kinds of ghost stories um, that uh, he would see people dancing and singing. Mm -hmm. And then they would come to him and bother him and he would say, go away. And they would all vanish. So he would, he said, I am psychic, you know, and I can see all these creatures. So I would see a whole bunch of people, uh, ghosts or spirits dancing around at this spot or that spot. And not only that, he translated or transported that idea to my parents as well, to my dad as well. So my dad, you'd say that we lived in a haunted house for several years. Apparently in that haunted house, he said, my dad said, told this, that in the middle of the night, suddenly there would be a lot of sound as if all the crockery is falling down from the kitchen, all, all, the, all the cutlery is thrown apart. And if you'd go to the kitchen, there's nothing. Whoa. It's complete silence. That's terrifying. That is terrifying to hear that every day. And my dad said we would listen to that every day. And then there was a servant in the house apparently who whom the ghost didn't like. There was It was occupied by one haunted guy who was apparently a ghost of an athlete. So then this he the, that ghost didn't like a servant. So every single morning the servant would find himself turned around in his bed. Oh. Yeah. I'm not sure my dad could be bluffing too or could be imagining things. It's possible. Was that unique to your family or is that fairly cultural? Like did everybody kind probably, of Probably uh ghosts? probably cultural because um I only heard my stories but then there were people the stories people talking about certain haunted houses are like used to be a very popular uh, scary places and there India in India we, they made a lot of movies about haunted houses and things hanging around and so it's it probably is pretty culturally strong um, 
myth, I would yeah, say, yeah. about the fact that there could be places haunted, there could be uh, ghosts lying around and hanging around. But I really like that idea of um, like a certain time of day of kids gathering around yeah. and just having story time with yeah. your grandfather. That is so lovely. Even if the stories are scary, that's still really lovely. And he would never tell us in a scary way. He would he would tell us in a very cool, confident way, as if he had control over the entire situation. Ah, see, that's that's amazing. He would, that would never scare him. Those ghosts would never scare him. He would just tell us as to how he dealt with them, oh. how effective he was in dealing with them, oh, even though they were not supposed to be where they were supposed to be. He he handled them very well. Yeah. He was in control. That was the idea. Hmm, I like that. It's very interesting. I think that is that is what was unique about my grandfather because he being a principal of a school wanted everything under his control. Mm-hmm. Towards the end of his life uh, when he was very old nine, almost 90 he would actually hallucinate that there is somebody coming and bugging him every night who wanted to sleep with him. So then he would instruct other people in the household to make sure there's an empty bed vacant lying beside him so that he would tell that person that go there's an empty bed there go sleep there don't bug me Hmm. so he had this problem so they actually ended up doing that they ended up having an empty bed beside him Mm -hmm. just to help him overcome his uh, but he he did hallucinate towards the end he probably was caught up was it dementia or like Alzheimer's no it just Imagination, I guess. He did not have all that. He was pretty active till the very end, yeah. Maybe it really was the ghost. Yeah, could be. No, I don't believe there's any such thing as ghost. Thank you for listening to Stories from Grandparents. If you have any interest in submitting stories or if you want to participate on the podcast, please send us an email at storiesfromgrandparentspodcast at gmail.com.